Huh? What? Hi guys, it's Lana here. Welcome back to Lana Summer Summertime. <laughs> On this channel, I share my tips with my curl friends to help you get your best curls and your best life. So if that sounds like something you'll be interested in, then hit subscribe and turn on your notifications. So in today's video, I am so excited. I'm so excited that I'm sweating. I hope that you are as excited as I am because I'm really about to put myself through it. It is hot in here and I am about to be applying some heat. The Dyson straightener is actually called the Dyson Coral and there's actually a curly girl on the front and her hair doesn't look all that different from mine. She's a little curly and she's using the Dyson Coral. That gives me some hope. This video is unsponsored and I will be giving you all of the tea. Like of course I'm going to talk about the negative points but if there's something good then I'll talk about that as well. Uh, yeah. First things first, they already put this on the red. This thing is like $500. <laughs> no, no, what the yes, you heard that right. <gasps> what? You wanna come to my house and ask me for $500? You better do your damn job. I mean, it's Dyson. We all knew it was gonna be expensive. You pay for the technology. What we need to see now is whether all of that technology and all of this originality and this innovation, is it worth it? This is the only straightener with flexing plates that shape to gather hair. But do I want the plates to bend though? Isn't the whole point is that I wanna like snap. I want it to be like firm on the hair so that it can like make it really straight. Like if it's gonna bend, then how's my hair gonna get really straight inside? Don't mind me, I'll just bend around you. Like I don't wanna disturb you and I'll just go down like this and then the hair isn't gonna get straight like i need like a firm straightener you know i need a straightener that's just gonna be like bend to my will you know i don't know why i had to phrase it like that you get what i mean though apparently that means there's less reliance on heat enhanced styling so i really want to talk about that less reliance on heat so somehow with this design they've come to the conclusion that you will get the same result with less heat resulting in less heat damage so that's obviously amazing for us natural curly heads who really want to protect these curls at all costs anyone who wants to protect their hair in general especially if you are straightening your hair on a regular basis i typically only straighten my hair like once a year you know got to do that length check if you're like me i don't know how worth it's going to be it also says it's suitable for all hair types it has variable heat settings so it says 165 185 and 210 so 210 is the highest which is actually 410 degrees fahrenheit and i think that that's what they recommend that i use I've seen a lot of people talking about how it's cordless. I've got mine charged charging right now because oh, it beeped. Actually says that you can't use it chargeless until it has at least 90% battery, which apparently takes 40 minutes. Actually, I don't understand. Actually, I no, I don't even know if that's true. Because ready to style when you are with 90% battery charge in just 40 minutes using the magnetic charging cable or dock. Why did my light just change? I'm starting to think that today is actually not the best day to straighten my hair because it is so hot in here. I'm sweating. I'm literally feeling my hair and it's I'm like sweating on my scalp right now. <gasps> I'm like... <gasps> I really want to give this straightener a fair review and given the abnormal humidity in the air around me it's really not going to be fair for me to review this straightener today. I'm going to show you me preparing my hair and hopefully that means that tomorrow I can straighten my hair and hopefully it won't be so humid. So let's talk about how I'm actually going to prepare my hair to be straightened. So first of all it starts with the wash. I'm going to use a clarifying shampoo because I want to remove all of this build up. I want to remove all of these coal defining products these oils and anything that's gonna make it hard for my hair to actually get straight I'm gonna get rid of all of that we're gonna have a fresh base and it's just gonna be me and my hair thriving then it's a good idea to do a treatment to prepare your hair something that's gonna probably pack it full of moisture just see it through this traumatizing time that you're about to put it through <laughs> this is the deep conditioner that I'm using it's the naughty 97% natural to the rescue intense moisture treatment okay so I'm back my hair is freshly washed i made sure to rinse everything out so the first one is this argan oil and almond milk smooth and tame blowout cream this is going to include a little bit of heat protection it's also going to help smooth the frizz down and yes we are going to blow dry our hair first of all i'm going to smooth that all the way down to the ends so on top of that i'm also going to add some argan oil to seal in moisture into my hair so that it doesn't escape also oil is a great heat barrier for your hair so use it 
a few moments later. Hi, so it's the next day. I was trying to wait for a less humid day and when I wasn't sweating as much. Today definitely feels a bit cooler, but I did check the weather and we're currently rolling at about 75% humidity. No! And for the next two weeks, it's on about 90% humidity. I think honestly, I'll be waiting for Christmas to come before I get a good humidity level. So we're gonna do the 75% humidity, frizziness, come at us, do what you will. We can start straightening our hair now. So the first thing I'm gonna do is section my hair off. I just work section by section, starting from the bottom. And through all my hair, I'm actually gonna put some heat defense serum. But yeah, this thing is basically packed full of silicones. I honestly think silicones and oils are the only things that are gonna protect your hair from heat. They basically said that for curly and coily hair, use it on the highest heat setting. So I'm gonna switch it on. Am I? Yeah, all right. Wrong. Huh? What? And I, oh. Look at this. There's like a warning sign or like a danger sign. It says exclamation mark. It says press the on button again. Okay. What do you mean? It won't let me press anything else. Like nothing else is listening to me. This one just locks it so you can't open it. You open that and it will come. But like, it's just telling me to turn it off. Okay, I wanted a hair straightener, not some Rubik's cube. Maybe it wants to be plugged back in again. No. Hi, thanks for calling Dyson. We're sorry, but due to the current UK situation, we are experiencing longer than normal wait time for which fast support. To enable us to offer you the best support, it'll... A few hours later, or a few days later, Dyson exchanged the straightener. My previous straightener was faulty. However, Dyson Customer Care Line was super helpful. <laughs> they came back quick as a flash to replace this. So now I have a new one. It's now on a green light, which means I think it's fully charged. So I have the little charging station right here. It looks really high tech. And in between passes on my hair, I'm just gonna dunk that on there. It's like charging while I'm sorting out the rest of my hair. I'm also just gonna put that there as like a safe place so that I don't burn anything. I like that it comes with that little charging station because I used to just put my straightener anywhere and I used to melt things and burn things, burn my leg. <laughs> so I do the chasing method and I have a specific chasing comb that I like to use. I haven't even used this yet and it's dropped down to what looks like about 80% battery. Let's go. Dun, dun, dun. I'm doing one slow pass down the hair. I mean, that looks good to me for one pass. Let's see what we can achieve with two passes. I mean, I don't see how it's gonna get much straighter than that, that's very straight. I mean, if we can do that the whole way along with 50% less heat damage than a regular straightener, then I'll be happy, because to me, that looks the same. I don't wanna be like, oh, it looks the same as a regular straightener, so a regular straightener is just fine, because I think the key point with this one is the 50% less heat damage. Like that's the selling point to me anyway. And then when I have a piece like this, I tend to just like clip it because it's easier than tying my hair every time. <laughs> the dreaded ear section. <laughs> it's honest, it's hard to say right now how this is gonna turn out in the final result. That needs another pass, I think. It came out like this. <laughs> That's not, it's not ideal. I think I kind of need to get out of this mindset that like, oh, if it didn't do it in one pass, then it's not good. I mean, people keep saying like, it's about the 50% less heat damage. So if you're going over it the same amount of times as you would with the old straightener, then you're gonna have half the damage. And if you're gonna go over it half the amount of times, then you're gonna have a quarter amount of the damage. Does that even make sense? Do you know what I mean? Let's talk about the cordless function for a second. Like, I'm barely noticing that it's cordless because I am putting it back into the little tray every time. I am kind of confined to only sitting here and only putting it back in there to make sure it doesn't die. And even still, I think I can see the battery dropping. You have to make sure that it's properly situated in there to make sure that it's charging properly. So I feel like you don't really have that much freedom to roam around. This is quite a big chunk. So I just want to test the straightener and see if it can do a big chunk or not. Because the plates are actually quite wide and quite long compared to some other straighteners that I've used. 
I'm just gonna make sure I go over it slowly. It actually did that big chunk quite well. I'm quite impressed with that. What's not really impressive is that the battery is going down. So let's just see, let's see if we, I can do a whole head without it dying, even though it's charging in between. I'm not really having much of the same issues that I've seen other people have like um, I know that there was like a beeping issue like it kept randomly beeping and I did have a bit of that earlier but I think it literally just beeps to kind of remind you that it's there it's kind of like beep beep hello I exist and then like you can either use it and it will stop beeping or if you don't use it it will just turn off which is good there's been so many times where it's like you have to rush home on your way out because you don't know whether you turned your heat stylers off I mean I'm pretty sure most straighteners now will turn off I seem to remember it was like a thing like way back in the day straighteners never used to turn off by themselves and that was a hazard <laughs> Why is this doing this? Like, why is that doing that? Okay, so it seems like that humidity spray is absolutely essential, but that's got nothing to do with the Dyson in particular. That's just the climate that I've been living in. I mean, we went from this to this, so it's not too bad. It's actually pretty good. Like, I don't know why I'm giving it a hard time. Well, that's not true. I know why I'm giving it a hard time. It's because it's $500. So there's just a part of me that's really looking for something amazing when really it's just a straightener and it's just gonna straighten my hair. I really do just have to keep reminding myself that it's the 50% less heat damage. Like, I feel like they had to throw a few more things in there to make it more attractive. I'm halfway through my hair and I've got less than half battery left. So that tells me that even when it's charging, it might not be enough to do the other half of my hair. And you can't, you can't even like fix it by just saying, well, like straighten your hair quicker because if I'm doing it quicker, then that will be less time that it spends charging, which means it's probably gonna die quicker. Okay, so it turns out the straightener did get a little bit of a break to charge some more because I needed to charge the camera. I think now it's on about half. I think I have found the way that this likes it best with plenty of heat protection serum on and plenty anti-humidity spray. It's starting to look smooth and silky. The side needs redoing. I don't know, the humidity. <gasps> what? Cut the cameras. Dead ass. Okay, the humidity did a number on this whole section. So this is what I tend to do once I straighten my hair, I kind of like twist it up like this. It does give it a few waves and I know it's not like 100% straight when you do waves, but that's how I do it. But we need to tackle this side again because I obviously did this side before I'd figured out like the anti-humidity technique for this side. This side was quicker and easier and looked better and this side is like not cooperating at all. That, my friends, is the final result. In the end, this came out to be quite a nice result. Like my hair on this side especially looks very straight. I mean, it's got a lot of product on it, so it's not looking especially silky. Let's get to my final thoughts about the Dyson Coral. I do really like this final result that we have here. It did take a little bit of trial and error to get here, but I am liking it like the smooth, you know what? That's actually really smooth. You know, credit where credit's due. That actually came out very well in the end. I mean, I mean, <laughs> it
It took a lot of humidity spray. That's just the weather and any straightener would have struggled. So was this one worth $500? 50% less heat damage when we did this compared to if I had used another straightener. Cordless, like cordless, I appreciate your concern. <laughs> However, it really doesn't make that much of a difference when you're actually using it because you have to keep it plugged in. Otherwise it's gonna die really quickly. Even when I had this sitting in there the whole time, we were getting low. We were getting to about 30%, 25%. If you had a mobile phone, yeah, I can use my phone, but every time I'm not using it, I have to plug it in. Otherwise it's gonna die. Like what would be the point of that? Because you'd never be able to take it out anywhere. It wouldn't really be portable because it would just die and it wouldn't really be serving its purpose. So, I mean, that's a bit of a harsh take, but that's kind of how I feel about the cordless aspect of this Dyson. Like I feel like if they can improve the battery power and actually make it last longer, then that would be fab because all you can really do on a full charge is maybe just like a top up. It's the dying after 30 minutes for me. <laughs> However, I know there's a whole bunch of technology built into it that I don't really understand. Something to do with the plates, even distribution of heat to make sure that no part of the plate is hotter than the other part, which means you're not gonna be like over burning one part of your hair and not really reaching the other part of your hair. Like it's gonna be an even distribution, which means you're gonna get an even spread of application on your hair when you're doing your hair. I think that those bendable plates did help me because you know sometimes you straighten your hair and it leaves like dents and lines and stuff on your hair where it's like clap and then you can see it um i didn't have that once when i used this like at no point did i ever have like a line going across where it's like you could clearly see that a straightener had just clamped on so i think that that whole bendable plates thing actually did have some benefit um a 500 dollar benefit though I'm not sure. I honestly think that if you are someone like me and you're only straightening your hair very rarely, I literally straighten my hair like once a year. And if you're anything like that, then I'm not sure if this is gonna be a worthwhile investment. However, if you are somebody who regularly uses a flat iron, regularly uses, regularly, I can't say that, <laughs> regularly. However, if you are somebody who often uses a straightener, then you might see a lot of benefit from having a straightener like this that's actually aiming to protect your hair from heat damage you can have healthier hair longer hair i think ultimately if that's you then this could be a really worthwhile investment we always say that hair is just hair but when you think about the amount of money that we spend on our hair especially after it's damaged and we have to spend a whole bunch of money to repair it and start making it look good again sometimes a one-off investment like this can be worth it however i don't really think that if it's my situation that's it for this video i really hope that you enjoyed it and that you learned something if you did please a thumbs up and subscribe also leave me a comment down below and tell me if you ever suffered heat damage on your hair and what you did or are going to do to repair it i love hearing your stories about your hair journey and if i can then i'll reply and let you know any advice that i have for you get me on instagram for the blessings and the breakdowns because i put it all on there and i'll see you in the next video bye